everything is conscious. Back in the 80s, I attended a three-day workshop on diet and nutrition in Oregon. Dozens of presenters and product talkers presented their theories and convictions about the subjects. On day two, I attended a roundtable discussion about raw food, as I had just been getting into juicing fruits and vegetables of late and was looking for tips and tricks of the practice. The moderator of the discussion was a devout raw food advocate, declaring that the reason people get diseases and age prematurely is because they exclusively ate dead food. Almost everyone in the room was nodding in agreement. But one impressive-looking gentleman with white hair and a full beard suddenly stood up during a small pause in the discussion and said, It's not important that we judge food as living or dead. It is the energy of consciousness we are eating, not vegetable matter. There was a long pause while everyone realized he was directly contradicting the moderator, who looked a bit perplexed. That's an interesting point, he finally blurted out, but... But there is life energy in raw foods that cooking removes. Unperturbed, the white-haired gentleman replied, There is life energy in everything because it came from the Creator. And by our conscious eating and respiration, we renew ourselves. Besides, cooked food is much less stressful on the body to digest. The moderator nodded noncommittedly and then quickly introduced a juicing advocate, but I instantly understood what the gentleman was saying and felt a little silly thinking there were good and bad ways to feed the body. There is a yoga of nutrition called Harani Yoga, coined by Bulgarian mystic and teacher Omran Ivanov. This yoga orbits around the concept of the cosmic exchange of energies between a human and the universe. True nutrition has less to do with exactly what you eat, but how you eat it. The practice stresses liquefying in the mouth each bite of food and imbuing it with one's own inner light before swallowing. The body then much more effectively uses the various essences, elements, and etheric energies to repair and rejuvenate itself. In short, eating is an exchange of consciousness between a human soul and the Creator. Here's a quote from Ivanhoff. Quote, Life is nothing more than an endless exchange between the universe and the tiny atoms that we represent. Cosmic life flows into humans who impregnate it with their own emanations before sending it back into the universe. Once again, they absorb this life, and once again, they return it. It is this ongoing exchange between humans and the universe that we call nutrition, that we call respiration, that we also call love. End quote. A larger point is that everything is energy, and that energy is consciousness. From a cosmic perspective, a rock is just as conscious as a stalk of raw celery, just harder to chew. Uh -huh. Just as a celery plant begins its form from the germ of a seed, extending through its DNA into a mature plant, and then transforming into decay among very much alive bacteria, it never actually dies. It is metamorphosed or evolved into raw materials for future celery plants or anything else needing its demolecularized and atomized constituents, which then become another form. The rock has a similar cycle, being a product of earth geologic activity, gravity, geopathic pressures, weather, and other interactions with the plant, animal, insect, bacterial, and human kingdoms. It is simple to see that a rock's life trajectory could very easily intersect with the life trajectory of the celery form, as at some point it becomes the growing medium for the plant kingdom. I propose that we get away from making the distinction of living or dead, because it is a limited view that is biased against transformations of forms. My younger brother died recently from cancer, but did he? He's still considered my brother, regardless of his form. I knew him as an infant, a mature man, cremated remains, and now he is still my brother in the etheric realms, no less real than his physical incarnation. By allowing ourselves to access wider bandwidths of perception, we discover a larger cosmic life, 
where physical forms shapeshift into other forms. All souls are never lost, and every point in the universe is a conscious portal to everyone we've ever known, everywhere we've ever been, and to source. It's easy to get hung up on the physicality of this density of consciousness, but it is no more real than anything, anywhere, or anyone we can imagine. We are all of it. We must allow that there is a cultural bias against what we imagine to be real and what we assign to be physically real. Cosmically, there is no difference. Our inner experience is also our outer experience. As Bashar says, there is no out there. It's all in here. It's all now. Everything we touch with the fingers of our physical body or our mind or our imagination is alive with the consciousness of source, always in transition, always transforming, changing and exchanging without end. It is about living the infinite quantum life, the conscious life, the creator's life, your life. You have been listening to This Quantum Life by Boyd Martin, brought to you by the Quantum Health Newsletter from Pure Energy RX, www.pureenergyrx.com.